good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Field of Hope. The music was louder than my voice. For those who don't know me, my name is Douglas Crichton. I'm the minister of East Duke Trinity linked with St. Monans. And it is the two congregations of East Duke Trinity and St. Monans that brought this field to life. A field of hope to bring a wee flash of colour at the end of what has been a dark time for so many. I'm delighted to share this service of remembrance and thanksgiving with two colleagues in the East Nuke, Peter Nielsen and Gavin Boswell. We have gathered today to remember. We have gathered today to give thanks. And we are here to praise God for the lives that we have had, that we have lived, that we have had intertwined with loved ones the loved ones that we now gather here today to remember. You each have, a, hopefully, if not one each, certainly one that you can look over somebody's shoulder, socially distanced, of course, <laughs> um, a, an order of service with our first hymn in it. The first hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. So let us worship God, either standing or sitting, as you feel most comfortable. Thank mm -hmm. you. In a moment, we're going to pray. It's traditional that we close our eyes to pray, but there is another tradition that keeps your eyes open. On a day such as this, in such a place, I invite you to pray with the eyes open. Our Celtic forebears said that there were two Bibles. One was the one that might hold in your hand, and the other is the creation around you that speaks of the God in whom we believe. And so, Today, keep your eyes open and let what you see speak of the unseen. Let what we know speak of the mystery of the God who comes. We pray together. In this field of hope, where flowers stand strong, lifting our eyes upwards in faith, let us be still 
and give thanks. In this open space, where grief, long imprisoned, can be released into the hands of God unseen. Let us be still. In the sudden surge of memory, when precious moments come alive again, let us be still. In the deep place where loves are cherished and never forgotten, let us be still. In the warm words of friends, stuttered in caring comfort, and in silent prayers enfolding us now, let us be still. In the gentle assurance of Jesus Christ, who spoke of a Father's welcome and a home beyond our seeing, let us be still and hold silence. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. with one heart and with one voice we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer that we have printed for you. <coughs> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against, against us. Deliver us, us from the time of trial. trial and deliver, deliver us, us from evil. evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus, speaking to his disciples on a hillside in an open space, spoke of blessings that come to people who may not in the moment feel that they are particularly blessed but there is a subversive word of being blessed in the unexpected place. Now, when Jesus saw the, word, the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs are the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, but in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. May God bless to us these words of his Lord, our Lord. No one 
here needs to be reminded how difficult the past 18 months have been. A particular difficulty for those who lost loved ones within that. We weren't able to support people the way we would want to as ministers. You've not been able to support your friends and neighbours the way you would normally want to support. And for those who are grieving and who are mourning, you've not had the support that you would normally have had. But the reading today is some sort of blueprint proposal. The reading today that we look at is to rethink life through Christ's lens. What lens would he be looking at it through? How would he have looked at what we are feeling and looking at just now? We can perhaps see today's reading as a tale of two halves, perhaps. You see, there's the first half there. The first half is there for us to seek and long after the deeper comfort in a relationship with God our Father. Seeking help and seeking blessing in the most difficult of hardships. The second half of the reading reveals to us the transformation that can perhaps occur in our lives as a result of that relationship, seeking to be a blessing to other people, even in these times that we have just encountered. So whatever brings you here, as someone to support others, as people to support each other, as people to feel the support, know that you are blessed. However raw you feel in your grief, know that God is your comfort. The remembering that we are doing today is so much more than just remembering memories. It's about acknowledging, acknowledging the pain. It's about giving thanks for a life that you have shared. It's about remembering those that aren't with us today. But remembrance is prayer. Remembrance is prayer. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. May God bless you as you remember today. May God love you as you acknowledge your pain before him today. And may God bless you as you do this with thanks in your hearts. The reading that we are about to listen to comes from Romans chapter 8. And the words are there before you in the service sheet you are holding. You may want to <coughs> cast your eye over them and join with me as I speak them. And in your heart may these words be words that you hold as your faith, as your trust, and as your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ in whom we believe. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for, all, for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? <clears throat> Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ, who died, 
more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As you come in, you were given a sunflower. I invite you to take that sunflower now. If you've not got one in your hands and you're in the field round and about, have a look at one that's in the field. I want you to have a look at the sunflower. Look at it. Look at it against the backdrop of whatever is in front of you. Each one is unique, yet strangely similar to the other ones that everyone else is holding. Each one has its own story. Each one has its own colour, texture and form. Hold it. Look at its beauty. Look at the pattern in the centre, look at the pattern of the petals. Look at how the leaves don't grow opposite one another, but alternate ways up the stalk. Maybe yours does have leaves that grow opposite one another. How unique. Isn't the pattern perfect? Isn't the spacing amazing but wait have a look at them look carefully are they perfect is every petal there is every every leaf that once was still there is every stamen in the center of it still there all will have marks all will have blemishes some leaves might have fallen off. Some leaves might have already curled. Some might have missing bits. Look again. Look again. Those beautiful imperfections are what make them unique. Those beautiful imperfections are what make them unique. So these flowers remind us of the people that we are here to remember today, those who have made us who we are. Those whose story we can tell with a smile on our face. Those whose pattern of life was remarkable to us, as remarkable as each of these flowers you hold is to God. But sometimes the people that we remember Sometimes they bore the scars of life. But throughout all of that, their beauty remained. We are all part of something bigger, something greater, something far beyond what our wildest minds could possibly comprehend. And that is being part of God's eternal plan. You see, the beauty lives on. The true glory of life in Christ never fades. In a short moment, there is going to be some music that is going to play. And during that playing of the music, you are invited to take your time to come forward and lay your sunflower in the cane-marked cross 
that lies just at the center of this sanctuary. The prophet Jeremiah said, Blessed is everyone who trusts in the Lord. They will be like a tree planted by the waterside that sends out its roots along the stream. Its leaves will never fade. It does not fail to bear fruit. The flowers each of you are holding today have served their purpose. So let's come and lay them in remembrance of the ones that we have loved. Take time now to remember and give thanks. Loving God, we give you thanks that we have time, that we can draw together and support one another like this as we do our remembering. We thank you for the beauty of your creation that we are able to enjoy. As we watch the bees still being busy, we know the world continues to turn and you take all of that in the palm of your hand as you take each of us. So guard us, we pray. Watch over us, we pray, as we continue in our service of remembrance and thanksgiving knowing that you are in control of all things. Gracious God, we give you thanks. Amen. 
on the back page of the wee short orders of service that you have, we have our final hymn, O Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go. At the end of the service, uh, Gavin will share with us a blessing. And as you leave, you'll be invited to take home a little symbol of hope from this field of hope. And that is in the form of a sunflower. Carefully nurtured, it will last for a week or so and bring that little glimmer of sunshiny hope into your home whenever you return. Let's finish in the last hymn, O love that wilt not let me go. made up of storm, dust and stories, of warmth and wonder, of blood and bread. We are made up of seeds and sinews, of hope and harvest, and living and dead. We are made up of genes and memories, of tears and laughter, of bones and breath. We are made up of God and glory, of love and questions, of love and hope. 
to go in the love, hope, and peace of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is with us and remains with us all our days. Amen. Thank you. 